Stem rust is a reoccurring disease that has wiped out entire regions of wheat. Today, a strain of stem rust called UG99 threatens to cripple the wheat industry globally. Is it possible that such a devastating disease could be overcome with genetic variation? That may be hard to imagine, but let's think about what we know. You're probably familiar with some of the basics of genetics. In your high school biology class, you may have gone over how dominant and recessive genes determine whether your eyes will be blue or brown. You're also probably well aware that you've inherited those genes from your parents. Well, plants also have genes that they've inherited. These genes determine more than just eye color. In a plant, these genes determine how much it can produce, how well it will grow, and if it's vulnerable to certain diseases. It's this sort of genetic variation that allows plant breeders to develop plants that are optimized for farmers and consumers alike. But how does it work? Stem rust is a fungus that can turn a field of wheat into crippled stems that produce hardly any grain. Historically, stem rust has caused severe wheat losses worldwide. As plant breeders make crosses, they have to choose parents with the needed resistance so that those genes can be passed down to future varieties. This isn't as simple as it sounds. Stem rust is a species that is constantly evolving, so it presents a unique challenge for plant breeders. Breeders have to account for this continual mutation, finding new parents and making crosses every time the pathogen changes. New wheat varieties are always being developed with rust-resistant genes, but as new races of stem rust appear, these crops often become vulnerable. Breeders must find a new source of genetic resistance as new races are encountered. But there's more to it than that. You see, there are many qualities determining the value of a variety of wheat to the market, and disease resistance is just one of them. Breeders have to balance all of these qualities as they develop new varieties. For instance, in 1910, the wheat variety, Marquis, became wildly popular because of its yield potential, its performance when ground into flour, and its protein content. But like so many other varieties, Marquis became vulnerable to a new race of stem rust. Plant breeders had to find a new source of genetic resistance. They found it in an exotic variety of wheat called coda. But coda didn't have great milling, bread making, or agronomic qualities. In order to introduce coda's strong genetic resistance into Marquis's desirable genetic background, breeders crossed coda with Marquis. From that cross, breeders selected a new variety of wheat which had inherited the traits that they were looking for from both parents. Because there are so many important qualities that affect crop production and performance, plant breeders often have to make more than one cross to achieve the appropriate balance of genetic traits. There's an art to orchestrating and conducting these crosses to achieve the desired genetic combinations, and this is the task of a plant breeder. Since the time of Aristotle, stem rust has been a serious and ongoing problem worldwide. In 1916, 1 1.6 million tons of wheat were destroyed in the United States and Canada. In 1935, 4 million tons of wheat were devastated in the U.S. alone. In 1946, India endured wheat losses of nearly 2.2 million tons. In 1951, Sweden's spring wheats lost 50%, and 40% of Chile's crop was destroyed. In 1953, Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. lost 5 million tons collectively over two years. By 1957, another two years of stem rust had almost entirely wiped out the Durham wheat crop in the U.S. However, the genetic resistance developed during this time had long-lasting effects. This resistance, combined with a time of slow evolution in stem rust, allowed plant breeders to focus on other problems. Until 1999, when a new race of stem rust surfaced. This race, discovered in Uganda, is called UG99. 90% of varieties used worldwide are vulnerable to UG99. Today, UG99 has mutated several times and is an even greater threat to global wheat production. Two of the most important genes contributing to rust resistance are vulnerable to these new races of stem rust. But breeders are confident that they can use genetic variation to develop new varieties that will resist the deadly new strains of stem rust. The original UG99 has already spread to Kenya, Ethiopia, Sudan, 
Yemen, and Iran. Research suggests that it is likely to spread towards South Asia, Southern and Eastern Africa, the Central Asian Republics, South America, Australia, and North America. Right now, breeders are at work developing plants with genetic resistance and integrating that resistance into local varieties for growing areas around the world. With the discovery of UG99 and its mutations, the world has been reminded of the impact that a disease like stem rust can make on a global crop industry like wheat production. But we've seen that this isn't the first time that stem rust has threatened the wheat industry. With international collaboration amongst breeders and researchers, progress is being made as we speak, and new varieties are being developed with resistance to UG99 and its mutations. This is just one way that plant breeders are using genetic variation today, but plant breeders are always using genetic variation to improve crops of all kinds for farmers and consumers worldwide.